Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Thursday! Thursday night here on the East Coast. I am Eroivis, a.k.a. Brian, and welcome. It's been a while. It's It's been quite a while, about a week and a half since I got to see you guys. It's a little bright. Turn you down just a little bit. Because uh, last Monday's stream got inadvertently canceled because of shit internet. But uh, we're all good. Technical, no di technical difficulties here. So welcome. Tonight we'll be doing some more photography. I have finished scanning in all of my film that I shot when I was on vacation a few weeks ago. And uh, I'll be working on some of that tonight. Tonight is also going to be a charity stream as I'm continuing to help out Sprites and Dice, my friends over at Sprites and Dice, raise money for the Trevor Project. As we, we're doing that until the end of the month and, we'll be, and I'll be doing uh, a giveaway of an art print, one of my photographs for every hundred dollars we raise and we start the night at 12.53.73 so we're only $46.27 away from another giveaway. So yeah, be working on some phot photography. Um, if you want to donate to the cause, the donate link will pop up in the chat from from time to time, but if you want to donate now, the mo it moves you, just type in exclamation point donate. And the link will immediately pop up. But yeah, let's uh, let's get started tonight. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of everything. We're gonna be doing some some color editing. We're gonna be doing some so, some some images from Boston, some from Cape Cod. There's gonna be some dead things because I always have to find the dead things wherever I go. And this is gonna be an interesting thing because I have not shot color film. All the color images you're going to see tonight are all were all shot on film. Something I have not done in literal years. I have not shot color film in years because I can't develop it myself. I have to take it to a lab to get it developed. And, and to be perfectly honest, I don't like other people touching my film. But as I do not have the space or the knowledge... To develop color film yet needs must. So I was curious to seeing how color film would look in my medium format Pentax camera. So I'll be sharing some of those with you tonight. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. I've got my Affinity Photo open, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'm gonna start with an image that I shot. This first one comes is in Boston. Um, in the Back Bay Fens area of Boston. And in this particular location, you uh, there are the Fenway Victory Gardens, which is... A, um, it's the longest, it's the oldest continuing Victory Garden still running in the United States, which dates back to 1942. So going back to World War II when Victory Gardens were a thing. And here I have a shot of, of the Prudential Building, one of Boston's more well-known landmarks. I'm gonna, do some, I'm gonna do some work on this. That's how we're gonna start tonight. I'm gonna do a little rotating. Because that is not actually straight. I want the Prudential building to be straight. I mean, perspective is going to be a thing regardless. And if I do that, if I straighten out one building, the other one is just going to look a little wonky. But that's just the nature of perspective and the lens that I'm using. So... I'll try to straighten out the Prudential Building as much I can, as that is the more well-known landmark. Oh, 
Hopefully you are all doing very well this fine evening. Okay. I am live. And I'll just do some very mild cropping. So I so right now our colors are looking a little flat because I scanned all of these in my regular film scanner, my Epson Perfection scanner, and when I scanned all the the negatives in, I didn't want it to do any sort of color correction of any kind because the Epson scan color correction uh, algorithms are not as good as either like Photoshop or Affinity Photos. And I want to do all the... I just wanted it to just scan it, and I'll do all the color correction and stuff in here. The only thing that I did with this while first scanning was automatic removal of dust and scratches, which you can do on color film in a scan not black and white film because of the way the technology, the scanning technology works. It's something called digital ice, uh, digital image correction enhancement. And that's just a fancy way of removing dust and scratches. But because the digital ice uses the information in color film to remove dust and scratches, it's something that cannot be done with a true black and white negative, so. This is all shop talk, I know, but you're, if you're curious. So let's do some color correction. Now, for film, because each maker of color films colors, their colors are gonna show up differently, depending on who, how, how they're being developed, and the different technology each uh, filmmaker uses. So for this, I believe these were... I've, I've got a mix of Kodak and Fuji films. I, I don't remember which this was off the top of my head. But colors are going to behave a little differently depending on the film. And... I know a lot of <laughs> I know a lot of my, my photo professors would kill me for, for what I'm about to say, but sometimes the auto color correction settings in Photoshop or Affinity are a massive time saver. Sometimes they yield very, very good results and can can save you a lot of time rather than going into each color individually and adjusting for adjusting each value to color balance. So I find in some cases, not all cases, that the auto the auto tone and the auto white balance features on Photoshop or Affinity do a significantly good job. They provide a good starting point for me and then I'll go in and do manual tweaks. It's a massive time saver. So for this one, for example, I'll just, I'll do the, I'll auto levels. And already, I mean, that's already a pretty decent job of, of color correction right off the bat. Little Chook, thank you for your donation. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Hopefully your animal, cr hopefully you, uh, you did very, you did all of your Animal Crossing stuff, but thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are getting closer to 1300 and an art print giveaway. We are $26.27 away from an art print giveaway. It's an eight, I'll be giving away an 8 by 11 of one of my photos. And I'll be doing that for... <laughs> ah, Wing41, good evening, and now that's a good Boston pick. Thank you! Thank you! And thank you for the resub. Six months. Well done. Yeah, this was taken um, in the Back Bay Fens area of Boston uh, in the Fenway Victory Gardens. Which, if you, if you missed my explanation, they're the longest, they're the oldest continuing Victory Garden in the country. So... The, the auto color correction technology in both Photoshop and Affinity have come a really, really long way. So I have no qualms about using auto levels and auto white balance for film, for, for working on film images, which are what these are. Because typically film is not properly white balanced the way my digital photos tend to be. So... I want to take a lot of the work out of go. I don't want to go into the histogram and go into each color channel and fine tune every single color. So I find that the auto levels give me a great starting point. Then I'll go in and make my manual corrections, which is what I'm going to do now. Because we definitely need, we need to, to liven up our blacks and our whites. We need to really, really liven those up. And the great thing about this is that you can tell it's a film image. Like, there is something... I mean, I can see, like, the film grain, and it doesn't look as, I guess, I guess the word you would say is as clean as a modern digital image. Like, you can tell. I can tell. You might not be able to, but I can. Now we'll do our, our color adjustments here, our hue saturation See if I can punch up some of these cyans a bit. Not too much. But I would like to make the sky a little more bluer. A little more, a little more accurate to what they were that day. Pump up the brightness a little bit. Contrast, um, a little bit. A little bit. Charity stream will continue tomorrow. Tomorrow tomorrow night I'm doing my my monthly digital board game night. So hopefully I'll have some of you lovely people uh on stream for some lords of waterdeep or ascension carcassonne splendor we've got a we've got some stuff
That'll be once again tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, no. <laughs> Next, please. And tone down some of those yellows. As in the greens are, are screaming at me. So we're going to turn, turn those down a little bit. Not too much. think we need to do a whole lot of enhancement in the shadow and highlight area. Yeah. Let me tone down the highlights uh, just a drop. Not too much. Not too much. I believe the next thing I want to do is some selective color. See if I can. Yeah, it's a bit much, bit too much. Yeah. I think that'll work. Let me save this. And because of the resolution that I scan color film at, these wind up being pretty large files. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see if, uh... Let's see if I can do have a little fun with, uh... With gradients, if that'll work here. Worth a shot, at any rate. Because you know me. You know how much I love these. That's what I wanted to do. Don't know if they will if they will help, but I would like to at least try. No, I don't think that's going to do much at all. Yeah, I don't think that's going to really do much. Get some of that atmosphere. It was a really nice day at two when I shot that. So let's jump to Let's 
What was that? 52. Do one more in, in the in the victory garden. We'll go here. Yes, yes, yes. I'll drink some water, bot. Thank you very much. But yes, I'm be repeating this. I'll be repeating myself all night long. If you want, I'll be. This is a charity stream raising money for the Trevor Project, which is an organization that helps LGBT youth with crisis prevention. Mental health services, great, great resource for LGBT youth. They're outstanding. I, I have some friends who have needed their services before, and they do wonderful, wonderful stuff. So if you can, if you can, please make a contribution. If you, uh, the donate link does pop up in the chat from time to time, but... If you want the donate link to pop up right now, all you'll have to do is just type donate into the chat. I'll do that right now. And the link will pop up. There you are. And again, thank you so much for your donations and your company. Thank you so, so much. If you can't, I totally understand. Money's tight. All I ask is that you share the link to the stream and or the uh, or the donate the donate link. Already, that is much better. Yeah, my weight balance was not off a whole lot. I'm getting a bit of a reddish hue, it looks like. Yeah, we'll just keep it at that. Now comes our, our adjustments. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely need some adjustments. Sound like the Rain Man over here. I'll be doing an art print giveaway for every hundred bucks that we raise. The next one will be is if we raise get to thirteen hundreds, so we're twenty six dollars and twenty six cents away at twenty six, twenty six dollars and twenty seven cents away. That's how that math works out. I can math. I can math good. You know what? Just for fun, I'm seeing the option here of um, for hue saturation. I can do my regular edits or I can just invert the entire thing. Well, there's your uh, nuclear hol. That's your problem. There's your nuclear holocaust right there. <laughs> there's your problem. Okay, I was right. I was seeing a bit of a re a bit of a red shift. Okay, let's let's tone down some of the red. Well, I'll bl um, yeah.
Because it was. I'm just like, wait a minute. That looks a bit better. Doesn't there's there's a little less of a red shift, particularly on the fence area. Not too much in a way of a cyan shift. It's definitely a bit of a red shift and a little bit of a blue shift, so I'm going to tone down the blues a bit, too. I think the greens and the yellows I'm going to leave alone on this one. Let's do a brightness contrast. Thank you, Streamlabs, for the link. You were falling down on the job a little there. Don't think anything's going to do for brightness contrast there. So let's... Might be able to get something out of the shadows highlights. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, wow. That looks nice and freaky. Tone down a little of those highlights, just a little. And then finally some selective color. Now, if I even do a little bit of selective color, I'm going to lose the grass at the bottom. I will lose all that, so we're not going to do anything with that. Cool. I might... That area looks a little too bright. So let's see if I can do a little little burn on that. Yeah, let's do a little dodge and burn. It, go away. Just a bit. Not a whole lot. There's something to make that a little less hot. Not much. There we are. I like that. All right.
Alrighty, moving right along then. A little death, because, you know, this is me we're talking about, so we're going to have to have... We're going to have to have dead things. Always need to have dead things. Yes, it's a pretty quiet night. I know normally I do my art streams on Tuesdays. I had to move it to Thursday because this, uh, this past Tuesday... I did something I have not done since about a few weeks before everything closed. I went bowling because I love bowling. I've been doing it for since I was five. And I had a brand new bowling ball that I wanted to, to use. And on Tuesday nights at the local bowling alley nearest me, they do half off of, of games. So I took advantage of that and made my right arm nice and sore. But I had a blast doing it. All right. So this, this cemetery was, this was in Ipswich, Massachusetts, actually. In the oldest cemetery in Ipswich, Massachusetts, let me tell you where that was. I believe it was, yes, it was. This is, because <laughs> they all have the same name. <laughs> this was the old burying ground in Ipswich, Massachusetts. This cemetery dates back to 1634. It is the oldest in Ipswich. And one of the larger sort of historical cemeteries I've been to. This one has about 2,000 people buried in it. Probably going to do a black and white of this one as well as a color one. Very rare that I do a color. <laughs> and I forgot which film I had shot this on, on the, whether by Fuji or my... or Kodak. Either way... Let me read you the writing on this thing. If I can. Or I'll just let Find a Grave do it for me. Here we are. This is, a, this is a child's headstone. So it's, here, here lies the body of Joseph Capon, son of Mr. Joseph Capon, minister at Topsfeld, died at Ipswich on the 11th day of January, 1704, in the 11th year of his age. And there's Latin on the bottom that says, Flos Floridus Morte Capitur. I don't know what that translates to, but I'm sure I can find out. Make it a little brighter. I 
Yes, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Given, spending some of your Thursday night with me. Doing a charity drive for my friends over at Sprites and Dice. Raising money for the Trevor Project. I'll be doing an art print giveaway if we get to $1,300 raised. Doing a print giveaway for every $100 raised. $26.27 away. All right. Don't know if this is going to need too much in the way of hue saturation because unlike the other two images I've edited so far, this was shot in an overcast day, so the colors look really good. I'm not getting a whole lot of saturation here. Um, no blowouts or, or any sort of color shifts that need need addressing. There's, there, there is some. It's film. It's going to happen. Good evening, Cascadia! Good evening. Welcome. Come on in. The water's fine. You come into my stream, Cascadia, and you tell me to hydrate. Fine, I will. Just for you. Cheers. And well done, by the way. Well done and congratulations. I couldn't catch your Rainbow Raiders at all this past weekend, but I saw how successful you were. Bravo! Absolutely well done. So what I'm currently doing right now is uh, I've scanned in all of my stuff from my vacation that I went on to Eastern Massachusetts just before Memorial Day. And um, these are all film images. So we've already done a couple from from Boston, from the Fenway Victory Gardens, and now I'm uh, and now I'm working on some death. All the, all the images tonight are, are film images. Uh, this was from a cemetery, the old burying ground in Ipswich, Massachusetts, which dates back to And so far for for uh, the Sprites and Dice fundraiser that I'm helping them out for, we've, we've also done pretty well. We, we, went, we blew through our goal for the month, and now we're seeing if we can get, get up to 2,000 before the month is out. I, what, I'm, what I'm doing tonight is if we get, for every $100 raised, I'll be doing a, another giveaway for one of my photographs, an 8x11 print. So the next one will happen if we get to 1300 before I sign off for the night. Because the Trevor Project is such a great organization. Yeah, not a whole lot needing to do on the satur on the few saturation front. Shooting in an overcast day really really does great stuff. That's true for both film and digital, but particularly film. All right. Don't think I'm going to do need much in the brightness contrast area. Maybe a drop of contrast. 
No brightness. I don't need to change the brightness at all. And maybe... Maybe a touch of selective color. Am I in the right layer? No, of course not. Oh, I also was on reds. That's better. But again, not much. Not much at all. So yes, if you want to donate to the cause, again, you don't have to, but if you, if you want to, all you have to do, uh, the donate link will pop up in the chat from time to time, but if you want the donate link to pop up right this second, type in exclamation point donate, and the link will pop right up. And thank you so much. Really, thank you so much for, for, for that. Charity stream will continue tomorrow as it's my uh, my monthly digital board game night. So I'll be doing uh, I'll have some friends on. We'll be playing um, some online, some digital board games like Lords of Waterdeep, Ascension, Carcassonne, Splendor, whatever we got. I will continue the good old fun charity time. Now, this is something I, re I really want to do gradients with. So let's see if it actually works. Why, will, why won't you do black to transparent? I'd like to know. I don't know why. I will have to look into that as to why it's not going to let me do that. I wonder, is it because I have it? No. Let me save it first. Does it have to do with a color conversion? Don't know why it does that. Oh well, I will figure that out. However, I said I wanted to convert this to black and white, so I'm going to do that. That's easy enough. Ooh. 
Now I wonder, let me save it as a black and white. Oh, I have a bot. Eight, three, four, three, four, five. Eight, eight. There we are. <laughs> yep, up, oh, I have a bot. I'm famous now. Now. That's just so weird. I wonder if it's because I have it set to 16-bit color. Let's try this, then. Let's convert the entire image to grayscale. Now will you behave? I am just, I am so curious. so weird. Whatever. Undo. Undo. Don't convert. Anyway... I'll work on that a little later. We'll jump from death to the beach. We jump from Ipswich to Cape Cod. That's a significant red shift. I mean, that's still a significant red shift, but... Yeah. Prefer that.
Not a whole lot of red here. I already did yellow. Yeah, yeah. If I wipe out all the all the blue, that takes out of most of my image. It's a lot of blue here. Although I wonder. Yeah, that didn't do a damn thing. Wrong layer, idiot. Yeah. That did nothing. Okay. I mean, we could just turn it into a, a complete black and white. But no, I don't want to do that. Because part of this is still me learning how to use Affinity. Nice scene. This is uh, Surf Drive Beach in Falmouth, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Although, now I'm curious. Now I am actually very curious. I kind of want to do a side by side to see how the uh, how the auto level works in both Affinity and Photoshop, which is something I haven't done yet. So this will be interesting on an image that has a very significant blue cast to it. So let's drag you over here. First... Give me my... Give me my adjustments. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Select a mask, quick mask, no. Layer. Image mode. There we are. Duh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need to know. OK. 
Okay, it's about the same. But now... What does auto color give me? Hmm. So if I go back to affinity in the same If I turn those things off I do auto color. That is interesting. That's fascinating. We'll do what I did before. Convert. Yep. Do my auto level. And do an auto color. Interesting that it does that there's virtually no change. Huh. Whereas there's definitely a bit more of a yellow shift. That is interesting. Huh. Alright. Well, I do. I like this better, so I'll work on this in here. <laughs> so there. Interesting. It's a nice side by side of the two programs, though. That is an interesting, interesting look. Because there's definitely a bit more of the yellow shift. I am okay. Things you learn. When playing with multiple image editing programs. It's... Uh, thank you so much for joining me this evening. For a second, the yellow shift looked like algae growing. Yeah. Well, that's just me having fun with sliders. Like, if I bump what little yellow there is in this image, then, you know, that happens if I go all the way up. But yes, this is a charity stream, once again, for the Trevor Project. It's, I'm helping out my good friends over at Sprites and Dice with their month-long charity, charity drive for this great organization. So, if you're able to, uh, please toss a donation toward this, toward our cause here. If we get uh, to 1300 before the night is out, I will be doing a art giveaway. I'll be giving away a print. I have not forgotten about you, Winged. I know I still owe you one. You won a print uh, the last time I did an art stream, which was last week. So we are $26.27 away from 1300 So if you're able to, if you're able to donate... Thank you so much. If you can't, I understand. No judgment. All I ask is that you share the link. And you can pump up that link anytime by typing in exclamation point donate in the chat. The link will pop up. If the if the bot is sleeping on the job. Thank you, Wing. All right. 
Don't need too much of a cyan shift. I actually kind of like that as is. A lot of blue in this image. Nice little sunset we've got here. Cape Cod sunsets are a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Yes, yeah, some red, not a lot. Nice little sunset scene here. And let's do a little, a little selective color, not too much. Somebody was just calling me for a sec. Little, little extra addition of the black there. Not too much. I was using 400 speed film here. I probably should have used 800, but I didn't have any 800 speed on me. That's why we're getting a little graininess right in this area here. Just a little. Not too much to worry about, though. Now what I want to do, since I'm here, is I want to go back to this image that I was working on in Affinity and adding some gradients. So we'll just do some quick revision. Sign profile, convert to profile. Change to Adobe, good, good, good. This, I just wanted to do a black and a white on. There we go. Max black. Lighten that up a bit. Not a whole lot of eh, some red. Yeah, a lot of green in that image, so we'll keep that as we'll darken it up a little, darken up that green. Now Wrong layer. I wanted it black and white, not white. I also added the wrong setting. Undo gradient. That setting. OK. 
Okay. A little much. Yeah, that's better. Because let's focus on this 11 year old boy's grave here. I will say, one of the features that I really, while Affinity, I, I'm discovering, is a very good program, there are some things that are so much easier to do in Photoshop than there is for in Affinity, like gradients, for example. I've said this before. Like, in Affinity, you, if you want to do a gradient, you have to, it's, each gradient is its own layer. In Photoshop, I can put all of the gradients on a single layer, and yes... Much easier and quicker. Here we are. Now, let's do a... There's my dodge and burn. There's my dodge. There's my burn. Let's darken you even more. Just want to bring that that front headstone right, right out there. Get some of the foliage behind it, grass behind it, yeah, yep, that, that really, really helps out, yes, yes, good, good. That's what I wanted. That's much better. It's already saved you, it's saved you. So let's close you. All right, another beach, more beach. The classic, sort of classic beach shot. And sometimes you have a case where the auto leveling doesn't necessarily work with the way you want. So let's let me let's take a, a look at that in Photoshop. Since now that I know that we've got some we've got a difference here.
I am just curious. Alright, not too bad. That auto color makes it darker. Huh. Huh. That's interesting. In a good way. Interesting in a good way. But I like the auto on here better. Because that... Photoshop gives me... We're, we're heading, having a green shift. Ha! Things you learn with color film. This is the first time I've shot with color film in literal years. And I don't shoot color film typically because I can't develop it. I can't develop it myself, I should say, the way I do with black and white film. We have one single photo lab in the entire capital region that still develops film in-house. And because they're the only one left, they charge whatever they like. And it takes a week. So for color work, I tend to use my digital more. But this was, a, this was an academic curiosity. Like, I've never used color film on my medium format camera. So let's, uh, let's have a look. Whoa, the hell'd you do there? What the? No. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's just, that's interesting. That's very interesting. All right, let's do a hue saturation. How much cyan do we have in here? Enough. More, more toward the top of the sky. What about blue? Not a lot. More cyan than blue in the sky. All right, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. At this time of day, yeah. Definitely a bit of a yellow shift. And no, yeah, no magenta to speak of. Okay, fine by me. A little more contrast. I mean, overall, this is a relatively flat image. Back to death. So this was in the same cemetery that... This one was. It was it's in the old burying ground in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Um, and 
I, I love the the skull and and bones motif of this one. to convert you. So I have all of my my editing stuff. Get some more black and more white in here. Oh, I did. I did this silly. Duplicate. Thank you. Brightness contrast. Definitely gonna bump up the contrast a bit. Drop of the brightness, not much. And see if I can liven up those blacks a little. Yeah, actually, I can. Because what I would like to do is. And now we've got some dust and scratches to play with because unlike co scanning color film, there is no functionality to automatically remove dust and scratches from black and white negatives. Time to break out our friend the clone tool. Screw it. Screw it. Just leave it there. Spots. getting rid of the obvious dust and scratch areas.
And I don't want my music screaming at me, thank you very much. So let's jump to a whole different soundtrack. I've had enough of you. Thank you. I have had quite enough of that. Thank you very, very much. How about some of you? Good evening, Live Deaths, and thank you so much for the hydrate. Doing another photography art stream this evening, trying to raise a bit more money for, for sprites and dice. I'll be doing an art print giveaway if we get to 1300 Hopefully you are doing well. Okay, why? Oh, I know why. I think it might have been just a case of the layers in the wrong order. Come on. Why am I getting the dreaded circle of, of, of death now? Why did you do affinity? Hello, Estrello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. You are just in time to potentially see my affinity photo crash. Which I think might be the case. <laughs> That's all right. I've saved everything else. Oh, that's why, because you had a fucking... I really, really hate when my programs decide they all want to update at the same time. Go away. I 
All right, well, we're going to start that over again, but that's okay because uh, that's just a quick re-editing. Oh, it saved it. Nice. Saved most of it, anyway. Does it crash often? No, I think that was the first time it crashed. I think I had another program trying to update at the same time, and it just wouldn't have any of it. Anyway, let's properly save this now. Let's hope it'll be the last. Yes. Yes, indeed. We're still we're still doing the charity thing. I'm still trying to help out my good friends over at Sprites and Dice raise some money for charity. And if we get to $1,300, I'll be doing a giveaway for another... Uh, art print, another photo of mine, so. That is the plan. But thank you for stopping by. Always appreciative of your company. Charity streaming will continue tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. as I do my monthly board game night. So I'll, I'll have... You know, if you, if you want to join in on that, we'll be playing some digital board games. Uh, games including Lords of Waterdeep, Carcassonne... Ascension, Splendor, those are all games that we can play online multiplayer f for, and that'll be fun. Yes, so far in our month-long, uh, our month, we've been doing this since the beginning of the month. We've, we've done, a, we've already passed our initial goal, which was $1,000. So, the more the merrier. Thank you. I actually think Sprites and Dice is currently streaming right now as well. So we're running a concurrent stream. I know, I think my friend Eric right now is playing Hades over on the Sprites and Dice uh, Twitch channel. But yes, I like this. Very good. All right. That looks good to me. So let's move on to another image. All right, we'll go but we'll do some more dead things, but uh let's do and let's go back to another uh let's go back to another color image before I do that though. Another shot from the Back Bay Fens of Boston. Don't worry, there'll be more dead things. I'm here to see photo editing, so Hades will have to wait another day. Thank you! <laughs> I love you too! Some more color film. All these images uh, were on my vacation um, on film. So I'm standing on a bridge here, obviously. I'm overlooking the Back Bay Fens and the Fenway Victory Gardens, which are off to the right there. So 
And let's do a quick conversion. Let's see what the auto gives me. Oh, wow. Nicely done. That gives me a sizable red shift. Don't want to do that. Back to blue. All right. I know all my photo professors, if they were to see me, they'd be screaming at me, never use the auto level. Well, you know, screw you. Sometimes using the auto level saves me a lot of time. Just sometimes. Professors never like to show you the easy way to do things. You have to figure that out after you graduate or while you're just fiddling. It's a gorgeous area. As I, I, you, you missed me talking about the Fenway Victory Gardens earlier, but it's uh, it is the oldest continuing Victory Garden in the country. It was established in 1942 and is still run today. There's uh, the Fenway Victory Gardens are actually broken. There's a, t a lot of tiny little garden plots that the residents of the city of Boston can rent out for a year at a time, and it's their own little plot of land. They can do whatever they want with it. <laughs> yes. Like, initially, the Fenway Victory Gardens, when they were established in World War II were meant to grow food because of rationing and all that stuff. But now some people still some people who have who have a plot here, they will sometimes they they'll, they'll still grow fruits and vegetables, herbs. Um some just have it's just their own little bit of nice nice landscaping, just a place to come to and just relax. Others have it. Others do things. They 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 do a mix of both. So, but yes, you can absolutely garden. All right, forty dollars a year. Because this is a, a collective between residents and the city of Boston. But if you do rent out one of these plots of land, there are a list you're, you are part of a, of, of a membership. And there are certain rules that you have to adhere to to maintain that. Is it $40 a year? I thought it was a... That sounds... Yeah, it's forty dollars per plot. But you, st it's forty dollars to rent the the plot. But you still have to pony up for, you know, your gardening equipment, seeds, and you know, just the cost of of maintaining that. So like forty dollars, you get the you get the small plot, but then you have to spend ev everything else to however much it costs to to garden. 
All right. All right, we've got a very strong green here in this. Green, green and yellow here. So we're going to tone down that saturation. A skosh. You could, absolutely. You could absolutely share it. It was, it's very pretty. And you wouldn't think, like, this is in smack, this is smack dab in the middle of Boston. And it's like, this little slice of, of, of rural in what otherwise is, is a sprawling city. Like, I'll show you what, what one of the other images I've done tonight. Is it you? Yeah, there, there's that. And that, so I mean, it just... This little slice of rural with the Prudential building looming in the background. <laughs> I'm going to save this just in case the program decides to crash on me again. I wasn't done with you. That is nicely muted enough. All right. <laughs> Let's just go full crazy on the blue. No. I do want to make that a bit more blue, though. And do I have enough reds in here to worry about? Yeah, no, not really. Cheers, Estrella. But yes, for those of you who are just joining me, this is I'm doing my photography art stream, which I had to move from Tuesday to today. And I'm helping Sprites and Dice out raise money for the Trevor Project, which helps LGBT youth. And... For every hundred dollars raised, I'm uh, we're, I'm going to be doing a art print giveaway. So if we get to thirteen hundred dollars tonight, before I stop streaming in about fifteen twenty minutes, I'll be doing a print art print giveaway. I'll be giving away an eight and a half by eleven of a random photographic print. So thank you so much for your company for all the donations we've already received this month. I'll be doing this again tomorrow evening, but it won't be photography. It'll be my monthly digital board game night where I'll have, have friends on. Hello! Hello, Tiny Dragon! But yes, tomorrow night I'll have friends on. We'll get to play games like Lords of Waterdeep, Carcassonne, Ascension, Splendor, and we'll, ha we'll keep the bar running. We'll keep the... We already received a donation tonight from our, our dear little Chook, putting us $26.27 away from a print giveaway. Because Tiny Dragon had to cause some chaos on the last art stream.
Do I have a brightness contrast layer? I do not. Not yet. <laughs> Who? Me? Yeah. Little Miss Innocent over here. Tiny dragon may look cute and cuddly. And probably is cute and cuddly. But beneath that innocent exterior lies a... A crazy, crazy chaos gremlin. I suppose once I actually meet Tiny Dragon in person, I, I will I will test the hypothesis as to uh, their their cute and cuddliness. No, I think that's not going to do much of anything there. So let's try one more thing, and if not, then I'm going to call that this one done. Ah, night. <laughs> let's uh, let's just make it nuclear winter over here. I do want to make that a little bit brighter. So let's just. A little bit more in the shadows. And I believe we're going to call this one done. We've already done that. That. We've already shown those. Oh, yes. So, and now for something completely different. Well, not really completely different. Do this one. So we go from this in the Back Bay Fens of Boston to right in the big throbbing heart of downtown itself. I might convert. In Boston, yeah, they're gonna go to Boston. Me being from New York, I should say, you know, Boston. Add an extra U in there. All right. Get a cup of coffee. Boston, it's, 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 Boston, they have no R sound. They have no R sound in, in anything, so it's, you always get the pack the cat. Like, what? He had a hat attack. Oh, some hats? No, some hats jumped off and hit, no, he, no, his, his hat, he had a hat attack. Yeah. That's better. That's even betterer. Got a bit of a red shift, but I like that. Mm. Are they doing auto colors? Auto levels. Auto color. Yeah, not too much different there. Yep. Let's do that. Yeah, a hat attack. Reminds me of the South Park episode of Jersey with cabbage instead of garbage. You don't need no fucking ass and hey. <laughs> oh. Yep. And what's always good, what's always good, every time I go to Boston, I always bring my Red Sox shirt. I'm a huge Boston Red Sox fan. I know, that's a very dangerous thing to say living in New York. 
But every time I wear my Red Sox shirt, I always get confused for a local, and it's always so wonderful. I mean, I know the place. I know I'm familiar enough with the area where you know, fine, but I just find it hysterical. Never fails. I always some some tourist is always going to ask me where something is, and with my clever disguise, they don't know that I am also a tourist. Ha ha! That's the secret. Who needs disguises and accents when you got sports paraphernalia? Exactly, exactly, Estrella. You have sports paraphernalia for whatever city you happen to be in, and that's it. Instant local. You, <laughs> that's it. But then the real test comes as if some someone actually asks you where something is. Can you pass that? My next D and D character is just gonna have a hockey jersey in that one. <laughs> is she going to be gritty? I have to ask. All right, we've got a noticeable red shift here, so let's see if I can do anything with that. Babe Ross will enter the chat in five, four, three. <laughs> well, maybe I just need to do an entire... How to summon Babe Ross. Yeah, gritty. Yeah. I actually think this image would look better as a black and white because there's there's a lot of similar value in here. So let's try that, shall we? So let's just magically, as if by magic, Ah, that was the contrast I was looking for. My brain is applesauce. I meant grade one and some. I mean, I mean, what's an elder god between friends? Although when you say elder god, I immediately think of the Mortal Kombat elder gods. So like Raiden, Fujin, Shinnok, Kronika, and Cetrion. So we're going to be down to the last five, ten minutes here. So if you want to make a donation, um, please do. Just type in 
exclamation point donate and the link will pop up. Um, but if not, that's fine too. I understand money is tight. If we get to 1300 before I sign off in the next five, 10 minutes, I'll be doing a, uh, art print giveaway. So, but if not, there'll be more chances because I will be back here tomorrow for digital board game night. Gritty is a new character in Mortal Kombat. When? As soon as Warner Brothers acquires the rights to him. <laughs> Thanks, Shadow of Colossus. Okay, that also works. Just going to plug this in one more time. I think we're good there. So we're just about at recap time. So let's do that. I know you're here. Ah, excellent. All right. Let me just close all y'all. Wish I could do... I wish you could donate, but I do need to be careful with my money for a while. But I really admire what you're doing and think it's wonderful to that it's taking part in this charity. Keep at it and thank you on behalf. Not a problem. You are so welcome. You are absolutely very, very welcome. I'm glad to do it. I love doing charity streams, and I know that more. I I know that there's going to be more from sprites and dice and more from myself. And I know we're trying to we're doing a planning to do something at the end of the month to close it all out, so. But thank you so, so much, first, for being here, for spending some of your your Thursday night with me. Normally, the art streams are on Tuesdays, but I went bowling on Tuesday. So the, the, there may be a permanent change into when I do my art streams going forward, especially if I am going back to bowling um, every week, so. Bowling is something that I've been doing since I was a li uh, since I was a wee little Brian, and the last time I went bowling was literally like two weeks before the pandemic shut everything down, and I just I had bought a brand new bowling ball, and yesterday or this past Tuesday I finally could do it. I finally went bowling again for the first time in sixteen months, and I had lost the callus. On my thumb, so after the thir after three games, my thumb was peeling off. So I'm like, nope, I need to stop. So I have to wait. I have to wait for this blister to heal and the new callus to to finish forming. <laughs> but I, I do have my. My first bowling ball, good old faithful that I, uh, my good old 15 pounder here that I, that I do use pretty regularly. <laughs> so. All right. Recap time. Let's, let's close this out. So let's go from left to right here. So that was the color version of.
color version of this one that I ended up doing a black and white do of right here. Taken in a cemetery in Ipswich, Massachusetts, which dates back to 1634. This is the grave of an 11-year-old boy. One of the shots from the Fenway Victory Garden. Another from the Victory Garden. With the again the the uh, the Prudential Building looming in the background. Back to Ipswich. <laughs> Loom. Thank you, Esther. I, I love when when I love that. When when a book could be a book cover, yes, a friend. Not quite the one that I have as a mask on my uh, on my red bubble shop. One from toward the end of the of the Victory Garden. And then a couple from Surf Drive Beach on Cape Cod. We have our, our classic center path to the beach. Classic classic touristy image. I did get a little touristy on this trip. I don't get to do it very often. There is nothing like a Cape Cod sunset, Tiny Dragon. I, I mean, I lived there for a couple of years, and I've been visiting the Cape for over 20 now at this point, 25. There is nothing like a Cape Cod sunset. More of downtown Boston. And then I went to Photoshop to edit a couple because it was working better for me. So we have that one. Same beach about a few minutes earlier. Surf Drive Beach in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And then last... Oh, no, that was... That was my previous one. I was doing a compare to see uh, which color tools was working better for that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I did tonight. And so some of these will be showing up on my social medias, on my Instagram and whatnot. A couple of them will probably show up on my red bubble. I want to hug the ocean. Just like, give me a hug. And with that, that is going to be it for me tonight. But as I said, I'll be back here tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. for the monthly board game night. So there's probably going to probably play a combination of Lords of Waterdeep, Ascension, Carcassonne, and Splendor. You guys in the chat, if you, if you want to join me, you absolutely can if you own the games. I'll have some friends on, and we'll hopefully raise some more money for the Trevor Project. So... Thank you so much for your company and for the donations. And until I see you guys tomorrow, have a great rest of your evening. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Get vaccinated if you haven't already done so. So I am going to take you um, on this wonderful journey. We're going to keep the theme going. We are going to keep the theme going, the nautical theme going, since I have this lovely beach image here. I'm going to take you all over to Marine Bio Artist. 
who is drawing some lovely sea turtles. So we're going to join me on this raid. Let's go see some turtles indeed. All right. Have a wonderful night. I will see you tomorrow.